Okay. We have the last one talk for today. So we will start in a few minutes. In five minutes almost, at least. help for something you are already tried the laptop uh, you are, okay perfect sorry uh, now Okay, yeah. When perfect HTML meets a. Okay. You're welcome. So, the last, call that, the last talk that will start in a few minutes is about when perf HTML meets A11 accessibility. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. Very, very useful. Can it affects the screen, but Does it work? During the presentation, it's bad. I see some change in here, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> it's stranger these things, but probably yeah. it's changed some things. Yeah. Happen. No. Yeah. Okay. Carol, these guys want to enter. For, uh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, please take a seat. We will start very, very soon with the last talk for today. Let me know if uh, no another 
Drums. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. So welcome for the last talk for today. It's a talk that talk about the accessibility. Yeah, cool. Uh, can everyone hear me okay at the back? Cool. So thank you all for staying uh, till now. It's been a marathon day. I should have brought snacks um, for myself. I mean, also for you. Um, <laughs> has anyone here watched the movie When Harry Met Sally? Okay, so this talk is not going to be about that. I was trying to be clever and like rhyme, but then I was explaining, like my, my sister, who's a doctor, so I assume she's clever, um, she asked me like what the talk is going to be about, and I was like, so it's, it's titled like When Perfect Female Met Ali, kind of like When Harry Met Sally, and she didn't get it, so I thought that would be bad, so I wanted to skip this, but I didn't, so I'm just going to say hi, and... My name is Eva. I'm originally from Slovenia. I live in China. Anyone else Slovenian here? Seriously? <laughs> wow, that is really cool. So, um, yeah, so I'm from Slovenia. I lived in China for quite a few years. I was doing uh, Mandarin Chinese, translating. Then I moved to the UK and I work there now as a web developer. I'm also a proud owner. I mean, owner is stretching it because you can't ever own cats. I, I live together with two Chinese cats, so they're Chinese, you can't tell, but they are, and a Mexican dog. And I joined Mozilla very recently, so in December of last year, so it's two months ago. I joined as an intern because, you know, they say, why not? It's never too late to, for a career change. And today I want to talk to you about this really cool project called Perf HTML. I know you must be thinking like amazing name. We must marketing brand it now. But it's it's really a cool tool. So it's it's Amazon's Gecko profiler and its main job is to analyze the web performance. It's a really really, really complex tool so I remember the first time I saw it it was not a magic moment. I was, I, I was like, okay, where, where do I start? Because despite its name, Perf is not perfect. It's actually a little bit broken, um, especially from the accessibility standpoint. So I was trying to demo how it doesn't work, uh, but because it doesn't work, it's really hard to demo. But uh, here you can see, like, just one of the issues was when I was trying to navigate with a keyboard, like the, you got this hideous button overlay display. And this is just one of the things that uh, I fixed. So I hopefully made Perf HTML a little bit better. So this talk is going to be more like a, a practical overview of like how I tackled um, accessibility issues. And um, I will first start with what Perf HTML is. How many of you here, if you raise your hands, have ever used Perf HTML? Okay, okay. How many of you that is not my team? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a couple, okay, literally a couple of people. Okay, so just, just a brief, you know, overview so I don't lose you. So, perfect email is, um, to start using it, you need to install the Gecko profiler, which looks like this, and then you can head on to any website, web app you want, and you can take a snapshot of the of activity. So this is CNN.com a couple of days ago, and what I did was I loaded it, I started a profiler, I hit refresh, and I got this profile. So that is the snapshot of activity of, of what happens when you hit reload. So. Um, like the, the layout, the graphics, the JavaScript, all the good stuff. But when you look at it, it's quite, it's quite complex. So if I just briefly explain it, like the first half of the page is the timeline. On the left-hand side, you have the thread names. Um, and on the bottom, you have the different panels. So you have call tree, flame graph, stack chart, and so on. And all of these are just different ways of displaying the information that the profiler collected. So that's either via samples, so by default you take like a poof, like one millisecond, you take a snapshot, or by markers. And typically when, when you take a profile, you start by, okay, it depends on, on what you, you're looking into, but you start by zooming in. So you would look for the, the red bars here, for example. So that just means that 
some amount of work is being done or even that something was stuck. So you, you would zoom in on that and then you'll get a colorful graph like this. So all the yellow stuff is JavaScript and all the purple stuff is layouts and all the green stuff is graphics. And on the bottom, you can see like the running time and self time. And with the profile, it tries to be helpful. So by default, it throws you into, oh, look, this function has a really long self time. You might try to start there. So that is what uh, an engineer might do. So this is a tool that is extensively used by Firefox engineers and to make Firefox faster. And so my project was to make it more usable and more accessible because uh, we planned to kind of like make this a really, um, a tool that every web developer could use in the future to analyze their websites and their, their apps. And so I approached this project from accessibility standpoint. So when accessibility is a really long word and, and in computing we always try to be efficient. So another term for it is a 11Y or Ali. So you, you take the first letter, so A, you take the last letter, Y, and then you count all the letters, it's 11, and that's how you get a 11Y. So today um, I want to just start with a, a case for accessibility because um, I'm sure you know that um, disabilities in various shapes and forms affect a huge number of people, so roughly 15%, which amounts to a billion people, which is a lot. And if you design inclusively, you will not only help people that have disabilities, I believe that you will help everyone because you will make, you will benefit everyone and you will provide a better experience for every user of your application. And so these are just a couple of most common accessibility issues. I, I won't go into too much detail because I think it's more interesting to kind of give you the use cases and how, what we used in our project. So things like color contrast and uh, missing all attributes and readability, error messages, consistency, and ARIA. So some people think that ARIA is like this magic pill that, that you can, so you can just like stuff your app with ARIA attributes and suddenly your app is gonna be super accessible. It's not just ARIA. So ARIA, if you've done things right, your app will already be like 90% there. If you use semantic HTML, if you use the right CSS, if you put the element in the correct order, if you make focusable elements focusable, and then on top of that you just add ARIA, which will help assistive technology, so they will enhance the experience for uh, people that use um, screen readers, for example. So, because time is precious and I only had um, three months to, to work on this, um, I started with like a strategic approach of auditing the app. So. Yes, you can do also lots of things with automated testing, but the best way to test your app for um, accessibility issues is with manual testing. So what I did was I started using it, which is the keyboard with a screen reader, and I didn't get really far because it was quite difficult. And um, luckily our um, project that lives on GitHub, we already have um, quite organized um, kind of like and labeled uh, issues. So there's also an accessibility issue. So I just started like filing all the things that I found were problematic. And then the plan, right? So I, I find out all these issues, but then we try to think about what would be the thing that would be most impactful. And one thing would be like color and color contrast, maybe designing a dark theme. But the other thing that we found that was really problematic was we did not support keyboard use at all. So we thought by working on keyboard navigation, we would not only help screen readers, but also the, you know, the power users. So people that use the app every day and just, they're just trying to be more effective and faster. So I focus specifically on keyboard navigation and semantic HTML and managing focus. Okay, so the good stuff, the actual, um, kind of like issues and how I solved them. So the first thing that I did was that the buttons are kind of overlapping. So what happened here was we had like five buttons um, that were displaying at different times. But if you were tabbing, if you were using tab to go through them, 
they would suddenly just go one on top of each other and there was no way of interacting with them. And to check that, um, I'm here I'm using on the right hand side the um, Firefox Accessibility Inspector, which is like a really cool tool and it's just been released a couple of months ago. And um, so here you can see that so in the Accessibility Inspector, you will get to see what a screen reader, what the type of information that a screen reader will get. So here there's like five buttons. So we have share and permalink and upload error and share with URLs. And we also have a progress bar. So one on top, like all five of them on top of each other. So here what I did was like instead of having all of them there, uh, we, um, so I, I, I rendered them con conditionally like because we are using React. And so the next bit would be, um, so we had all these tabs um, that you could click on and you would select ranges, but you couldn't do anything with a keyboard. So a good rule of thumb is, is that if you can click on something to interact with it, you should be able to do the same thing with a keyboard. So we have all these different um, thread names on network, compositor, web extensions, and they're just like completely inaccessible. So, and the other issue was that they were actually inside of an H1 tag, so which is a no-no. Uh, so, as you know, like one <laughs> uh, one page, uh, web page should only have one H1 tag, because other, otherwise you're just being uh, confusing. So instead, I wrapped this in, into a button, and by by using a button, which is a native HTML element, you get all this really cool free stuff. So you get the roll of a button, you get an on-click and on-key down um, event listeners as well. And so yeah, just like a quick caution. Um, so if you have uh, a tendency to custom design your checkboxes and buttons, make sure that you don't just give it, you know, okay, this is, this is a, a div that I call my button, and I just give it an on-click event and problem solved, no. So in order to provide a, a properly functional button, you can have to give it a roll, on-click, on-key down, and a tab index. So by a tab index, you'll be able to access um, the button in a tab sequence. Cool. So next thing was focus management. So as I was going like, through the page, like, suddenly like, I found myself in uncharted water. So like, I, like, just the tab would disappear. I wouldn't know where I was. It was really difficult to debug. And I, I found this really cool function that uses the JavaScript uh, native uh, event listener, so focusing. And by doing that, if you then just console log it, as you tap through your app, you will get like, all the information about, oh, focus, I'm in input, yes, good. Focus, again, input, or A class. So this is like, it's really good for debugging um, where your focus is. And just a side note, like sometimes when we tackle like, accessibility issues, we try to do too much. So you, you're like, um, okay, I will now make everything tabbable. So you'll be able to go to every heading and everything like that. But again, if something is not interactive, don't put it in your tab index. Like don't, don't put it in the tab sequence. So another thing is a focus indicator. So Firefox has this really tame default, like dashed um, outline for when um, an element is selected. So instead of doing that, we were being bolder and we, we went with the photon button, uh, more prominent styling. And again, different browsers style their outlines differently and and that's why, as, you know, especially if you work in design, maybe we have a tendency, okay, just remove the outline, it's ugly. I don't like how it shows in, in Chrome or in Firefox. So when you remove an outline like here, make sure to test it properly in all different browsers or go use a box shadow. Like, so we're using a box shadow instead of using the outline just to have that consistent um, look. Another thing was just using the keyboard but then just being stuck in this keyboard trap. So uh, I would open a panel and that panel would forever be opened, which is not a good user experience. And so make sure that whenever you have modals or panels that you always provide um, a key down, on key down event. So we added it here to the window action. So anytime, anywhere a panel is open, you can always close it with an escape key. 
So yeah, another thing is, uh, so we have really good documentation. We also have video tutorials. And actually, the number one accessibility issue is the lack of captioning. So when I was like too frustrated with the code and everything, I also worked on the captioning. So all of our video content is, has the like nice captioning. So that's uh, Greg explaining how perf HTML works. So if also, if you want to learn more about how it actually works, I really recommend that you check out the series and the subtitles. Okay, and lastly is on the ARIA. So originally, so on the left-hand side, uh, when you were tabbing through the different buttons, you would get to load a profile from a URL. And if you were, if you were on a screen reader, it would just say, button, load a profile from a URL. And you would have no idea that there is like any other content afterwards. So what I did here I, is I added an area expanded attribute. So now when you tab to the load a profile from a URL, it would say, button, collapsed. I was like, oh, okay, collapse. So you click on it and said, button, expand it. I'm like, okay, so that makes sense. Okay, so that's kind of the scope of what I was able to do in the two months. Um, and now it's like, I'm just going to quickly show you how uh, it looks like. So this is the, um, the demo of hopefully ah, the working um, app. So uh, we start at uh, the top. So there is a quite prominent focus indicator. I'm just using a tab key to, to go and select. I'm going to load a profile from a file. Um, so the profile opens, I'm tabbing, and now there's the panel. I close it with an escape key, I tab, tab, tab. Again, I'm going down through everything that can be interacted with. We can use this uh, prominent focus indicator. I can open a sidebar, and I can close it, and there's the radio buttons and check boxes. So yeah, that is kind of not the finished project yet, but it's definitely miles from um, where it was two months ago. So now at least it's navigable, it's, um, sorry, it's navigable and it's like a beginning of hopefully a, a longer project because there's like a ton of things that still need to be fixed. Okay, so let me just go back. Oh, this got, okay, just uh, this kind of got mixed up. But just a note about the area attributes, they're really, really cool as CSS selectors as well. So sometimes you want to really, really make sure, okay, I only want to style this when the button is expanded. So before um, here, it doesn't have this blue thing, but when it's expanded, it's blue. And you can like really make sure that you're styling the right thing by using the, you know, the, uh, area attribute here. Okay, so just a couple of tools that I use because we always like new tools. So that's, there's the Gecko Profiler web extension. Um, there's the Accessibility Inspector. So it lives in Firefox DevTools. If you haven't checked it out yet, you should. Um, it's not enabled by default. You have to enable it because it has a little bit of an overhead. But it's really, really good way to start like checking what gets added to the DOM, because, you know, sometimes you'll be surprised. Um, there's also the WAI area authoring practices with design patterns, so don't reinvent the wheel. Check that you are actually adding the right attributes, and uh, so that's a good way to do it. And then there's also the oldie but goodie uh, web developer um, add-on. Uh, add that, uh, by Chris Pederick that is really cool for like checking, I don't know, which, which images are missing alt attributes, um, maybe your elements are in the wrong order, uh, so that's like a really good one. We also have a Slack uh, channel accessibility, so if you ever have any questions about um, how to, uh, anything about accessibility, you can find us there. There's also Twitter, so sometimes we were trying to be like we didn't know, we thought like in theory this sounds like a good solution, but we weren't sure. So in those cases, Twitter was really helpful because we were able to reach out to actual users and get good advice. Um, and also, of course, there's my, my team that were um, sometimes quite critical, but always constructive. And um, yeah, again, this is a bit weird. Okay, so just to recap, when you design your pages or apps, Make sure to check what gets added to the DOM 
Again, Accessibility Inspector will help you with that. Use native HTML elements. I know we try to get fancy and design our custom checkboxes and things like that. Um, enable keyboard navigation, so that way you can capture uh, power users, but also people that are not able to use a mouse or trackpads or people that are using assistive devices. Make sure that your elements are in correct DOM order. Um, if the outline is not prominent enough, which by default often isn't, make sure to custom style your focus indicators. And also, of course, make sure that you test it cross browsers. And also, of course, there's ARIA. And so lastly, just before I finish, prayer for everyone. So if you haven't checked it out yet, Perf is a really cool project. And we are a very friendly and welcoming community. We also, if you're new to open source, that's, that's fine. We have good first issues and um, our team is always happy to kind of like coach you through the process of maybe contributing, like push, pushing your first contribution to open source project. We live on Slack, um, so look for us at uh, Firefox DevTools on Perf channel. And obviously search for issues labeled accessibility, not, ju not just in our project, but also in GitHub. If you just check accessibility, you can start fixing the web and making it a little bit less broken today. And so the slides are on my GitHub. That's Eddie Blue, that's me. And I also run a nonprofit called Girls Code MK. Uh, MK stands for Milton Keynes. So it's a nonprofit that teaches uh, women and girls. So actually, Connie is here. She's our youngest member. Um, and she traveled. She surprised me, and she did. she's here. She traveled from Milton Keynes. <laughs> yeah, so if you have any questions about Girls Code MK, you can ask uh, Connie. Cool, thank you. Any question? Yes. In the beginning, you showed that uh, components weren't accessible. Did you have some training for your colleagues so that they don't write more inaccessible components, or were you just hunting what's broken and try to fix it? Right. So there is. Okay, so our project is also, we're trying to implement automated testing and you can catch a lot of things like that. But you will never be able to fix everything if you don't manually test. So I would suggest that you try not to use your mouse while you use your project and you will, like, you will spot it immediately. And you can also use, um, for, on macOS you have voiceover, you have screen readers like NVDA, they're free. And so just by using that, like, it will blow your mind. Like, it's so hard if you don't have the right attribute, like if you don't have area there, if you have a div that's supposed to be a button but it doesn't give you a role of a button, you will never know that you're supposed to click it. And like, so manual testing, I think, is the way to go, in short. Yes. So the, uh, these last few years, I've been interested a lot in uh, semantic web, so basically RDFA and JSON LD and so on. Uh, you see more and more uh, UI elements being also implemented, uh, or sorry, described uh, using JSON LD. For example, you can indicate to Google, for example, that uh, the input is a search bar, uh, things like that. Uh, I wondered if you knew if there were also plans to have uh, access accessibility features uh, that are directly implemented in, in semantic web that would basically allow somebody to have kind of the double use between, oh, if it's already in structured data, then you can also use it for the purpose of accessibility. So, so the thing is, when you use a native HTML element, so for example, if you use an input and, um, and you say it, it's, I don't know, a text area, the accessibility tree will already know what it is. So inputs, um, buttons, select, if you use these elements, you will get the accessibility functionality for free. And the only thing that you need to do is then by enhancing that with area attributes. So, I, and I think this is kind of where we are at the moment. So everyone is like very hot on accessibility and